This is the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. I'm your host, Amanda Kendall of the notaballerina.com travel blog. Every episode, I'll share travel tales from several fellow travel lovers, and together we hope to entertain and inspire you, remind you of some of your own great travel experiences, and encourage you to hit the road again soon. Welcome to episode 104 of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Today's topic is all about my recent trip to Fiji, and it's about Fiji and empowerment tourism. You might remember I went on this trip with Hands On Journeys, who's our sponsor for this episode, and their big thing is empowerment tourism. So helping local people to uh, find ways to improve their lives, basically. And in this case, um, in Fiji, they've helped a group of women at a village in the Bar province set up some cooking classes. So uh, that's basically the topic of today's episode. And I asked a couple of the people who came on the trip with me to tell me about Fiji. I had this idea, actually, that we would talk about all of the different things we did on our Fiji trip, because we had some awesome experiences. Uh, we went um, to a, a private island for a day and spent it um, snorkeling and stand up paddle boarding and kayaking. And we also went to these amazing mud baths and ended up, you know, all covered in mud um, and going through these thermal pools to get it off. And we did all kinds of amazing things. And my vision for this episode was it would be kind of all about all the different things we did. But everyone I talked to said, oh, I just want to talk about the day we went to the village. The day we went to the village was number one, and I felt exactly the same. So this was when we went with the um, – so the Hands-On Journeys took us to their site of their Empowerment Tourism pro- uh, Project. And so I've decided that this episode is just going to be all about our village day because it was one of those amazing special times when you travel that doesn't happen very often, and I would like to find these opportunities as often as I could because it's really special. And – it turns out it wasn't just me that thought that. It was it's pretty much probably everybody on our trip found this the highlight. So um, I could actually easily talk for a whole episode just about my own experience of visiting this Fijian village, but I'm going to let the others talk for me instead. I've actually got a blog post about it. When this comes out, it'll be kind of the, the second one on the blog, and I'll leave a link in the show notes to it. So that'll describe a lot more about my experience visiting the village. Of course, I had my son with me who was eight at the time. He's still eight. Thank goodness he doesn't have too many birthdays too often. But um, it was a really special experience for both of us. Uh, so, so many good parts of it. But I think bringing an eight-year-old with me, it was so lovely to see how welcome he was in this village and he was kind of adopted by so many people at various parts of the day. One of my favourite photos is, in fact, um, from a long distance away, and it's so Fiji and it's so green and lush and so many palm trees. And in the distance, you can see my son walking along uh, with one of the mums from the village who'd uh, taken him for a bit of a bit of a wander after we'd been checking out where they were making our lunch. And um, she was so lovely. And my son's not the kind to go off with strangers ever. Uh, but he was happily wandering along chatting with her and it was just a really lovely moment that reminded me how welcome we'd been. Um, anyway, um, before I get to my guests, so just to be clear that this uh, episode is brought to you by the fabulous Hands On Journeys. You can see um, information about their tours at handsonjourneys.com. You can use Amanda10 for a 10% discount on any of their tours. But in particular, they are taking another trip to Fiji in September so if you're listening to this later, this is September 2018, and I would highly recommend it um, for a million reasons. <laughs> but um, don't forget, you can use that Amanda 10 for a 10% discount on it, and I will leave a link in the show notes so you can go directly to that Fiji trip. Um, it would be an amazing experience. So on to my first guest today, and she is Whitney Taylor. So she uh, was um, one of the other people that I met on this group trip. She was gorgeous. She took lots of amazing photos. Um, thank you, Whitney. It's very rare that I have photos of me and my son together that are not kind of, you know, half uh, half blurry selfies. So it's pretty cool to have some photos from Whitney. And uh, as I said, I asked Whitney to tell me something about what she liked about our trip to Fiji, and it was all about our day at the village. It's 
really amazing to be able to go into a type of community that has not had the impacts of tourism because mm. tourism obviously hasn't ventured out that far. Um, yeah, it's it, it was an, a, an incredible day to actually be able to experience Fiji the real Fiji way um, rather than all the quite not so much fake but all the kind of – I don't know, like the the facade that you get introduced to when you go into the five star hotels of yeah. what Fiji's like. I mean, Fiji is so beautiful, and the hotels are incredible. And no matter where you stay, it's just this beautiful beach culture, and all the uh, staff are smiling and happy. But to actually go into a community, and they're not there working; they're there to just welcome you in and smile at you because they want to smile at you because they're not being paid to smile at you. That is just such a difference mm. um, to the way that you experience a culture and get to travel. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Um, and I think Fijians are friendly anywhere, but when they were welcoming us to their village, that was amazing. Perhaps um, can you just describe a bit about what we did that day? Yeah. So uh, when we got there, we got to have a uh, – proper introduction into like a carver ceremony which carver is a big uh big part of their culture it's this root that they grow from the ground and they drink it uh through you know they drink it they drink it almost like the way that uh westernized people drink beer they drink it all the time as like <laughs> a special you know drink um and they do it for ceremonies but we had like an amazing ceremony for it which lasted um, I think about 20 minutes and we all got to have our own little special uh, carver and it it was um, something you haven't experienced before when you go somewhere, like to actually see them make it and to experience the the ceremony with their own language as well. That, mm. that was a really great introduction. And then um, straight from that, we went into a, all the, all the ladies, they started cooking. So they started prepping everything for the big feast that we we're going to have. And we all got to have a little part in whatever we wanted to have a go at. So all the different fruit and vegetables and the way that they're going to cook the fish and then the coconut milk they were going to make for most of the meals. So we actually got coconuts and we uh, got to grate the coconuts sitting on this strange looking chair with a <laughs> stick coming out from in between our legs with this kind of forked knife on the edge. And it, <laughs> it doesn't sound safe. It does, but it does. It was. It. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so much fun, like to sit there and, you know, really put your arms and your back into it and great the coconut so then they can actually make this coconut milk it's it's such a process to do that type of cooking and something that you go oh my gosh like we really do take for granted the way we cook back at home because it's yeah. so easy they don't have the cooking equipment that we have like they don't have the ovens and everything and mm. it was a really interesting experience um and from that uh, we went to see how they would cook all the meat, all the chicken and the fish, and it was this type of – if if you've been to New Zealand, you know that they have this thing called the hungi and mm. in the ground where it's a similar thing here. They build it above the ground. They use stones and they use the palm leaves and they heat it up and make their own kind of oven pit. So then they put the meat on the inside of that, and it, it was such a cool thing to watch. I mean, it's – what an experience to, yeah. you know, almost a couple of hours of the whole day just to cook. Like that's, that's a, it's a, it's a job in itself. So. Yeah. 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 It's not a quick meal, is it? Yeah. You can't it's just rustle up some quick, quick food meal. for the tourists. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, that's so different to going to another, you know, destination where they've already just made the food for you and you're mm. like, Oh, try the, you know, coconut milked fish um, stew that they've made you know, it's, it, it puts a lot more, oh, I guess, passion behind the mm, food. Mm, mm. And you just appreciate the effort that's gone into it in a whole new way. It, it tastes different too, you yeah, know. It tastes, yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, gosh, this tastes good because I made some of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I know it's not it's not easy. I didn't get to have a go on the, the grating of the coconut. I was busy with my son and the kids. But I heard that it was not easy to get that uh, coconut going. 
Oh, it was not easy. But once you got going, you know, I, I some of us were like, oh, can we have this back at home? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it was great. Um, and then what else from that day? We we went on to I think two of the guys played soccer with the kids. Um, I know you were with the kids with Ruben while well, they were drawing all these school pictures for um his school mm-hmm, mm-hmm. back home, which was like such a beautiful thing to see how excited these kids were to communicate through images and through writing on these you know on paper back to a, a school in Australia in this western world and the, these ki- uh, what what um people probably don't realize is this community's never seen tourism go to it mm. which was an amazing experience because you're actually getting to you getting to talk to people um that really are interested in you and that yeah. are it. they're really interested in what you do back home and they're really interested to show you how they they live um I know one of the chiefs was talking to my partner who came on the trip with with us and he was telling him how the how climate change has made such a such an impact on their community that apparently the river that the right next to has moved 30 meters um in the past x amount of years and we had wow. no wow i had no idea that. i didn't hear that wow uh, yeah so uh, you know just to share this information out was incredible and mm. um you know add the cyclones onto that they're having to constantly move their homes and rebuild so they they've been losing a lot of land over the past you know 10 20 30 years wow. because of climate change in this river and also the cyclones so it's they're constantly having to redevelop and it's like, oh, my God, crazy. Back home, I, I would never think about having to move my house, you know, 30 metres the other direction. No, because of course. Of, you know? Yeah, that's incredible. Wow. Yeah, so so finding out these these things about this culture was really, really quite um, interesting. It was, it was really, I guess, eye-opening to how they live other than just, you know, seeing the – hotel and the beautiful beach and the palm trees yeah absolutely it's such a different way and it's so interesting because that's what I really want to know when I travel is what's it like to be a local here Uh, because I you know it's hard to get that experience in general when you travel because yeah you're maybe in a nice hotel or it's hard to kind of and if you're just there for a week on your own it's hard to kind of find any local people to meet so yeah it was such a great day out yeah, yeah, I, I totally agree. It's yeah, it's a different, it's a really beautiful, real experience to be like actually given the chance for one day to be immersed in someone's culture and how they live their lives and how they spend with their community. Um, something else that I found really interesting is they actually had right next to where we were, they had a massive house and that was the house for the chiefs mm. and uh, all the chiefs that. Uh, lived there also they buried them in the graves next door to them um to that house and it was really quite incredible how much they really respect their elders and their chiefs Mm. um and what i found really interesting was the what the chief who passed away the year last year was actually a female so that kind of says a lot about their you know social equality inside Mm -hmm. their you know, in, inside their community for like men and women that they actually had a female chief that they still haven't appointed a new chief for because they're still getting over that one. Yeah, I was so surprised too when I heard that it was a she. I just, yes, yeah, I just didn't expect it. You kind of think it's a, yeah, you know, it's a long don't. running culture. They're going to be, you know, sexist like we all were, all still are. But no, they were, yeah, so progressive that they, that's fine. A female chief was obviously just a normal thing. How awesome yeah. was that? Yeah. It's so <laughs> awesome and so, and so respected as well. So it, it's, you know, you don't get that down at the hotel. You definitely <laughs> you don't. get don't. to find out that information. I'm utterly fascinated by all those extra bits of information you get when you get to meet locals. And, for example, the um, discussion that we had about uh, the 
chief being female of the village. And I ended up going back and doing a bit of research because I was curious, is this common in Fiji? Is it not? And it turns out that the village we went to, Nailanga, is actually fairly progressive. I found a bit of research from a a book called The Land Rights of Pacific Women, of all things. Thank you, Internet. Makes it easy. And um, it said that uh, they were increasingly, and this is back in the 80s even, that uh, seniority rather than gender is increasingly the basis for leadership choice and decision making in Nailanga Village. And uh, that, yeah, made me feel quite uh, intrigued. And now I want to go back and find out more. I'll leave a link to that book in the show notes. Uh, And as well, uh, Whitney mentioned how uh, they'd been discussing climate change and uh, changes to land and stuff. And my son spent part of the day with some of the local kids. His class back in here in Perth had written some letters to the local kids, uh, the kids who were the, um, the children of the women running the cooking class. And some of the, or one of the letters that the Fijian kids had written back actually even mentioned that, that, you know, thanks to climate change, the weather has been different there. It used to be always hot and sunny and now they're having more storms. So it was something that's obviously present, um, in, in a lot of their thinking. So that was another really interesting thing. I could go on forever, but let me go on to my next guest. So my second guest for today's episode is Luana Markey. So Luana and her husband Lucas actually went um, t- on a previous trip to Fiji with Hands On Journeys and then came along with ours with our trip as well. So this was their second visit. Uh, Luana and Lucas moved to Australia a few years ago from Brazil. So they have a, a different perspective again. Uh, so it was really great to chat with her about it. Now we start off in this conversation talking about their first trip to Fiji. For the first time, I think was really touching uh, when we met the kids in in the village and how connected we felt with them. When I say we, I talk about me and Lucas, my husband, I think uh, like for us, we, we felt at home because uh, being from Brazil, we used to have like big celebrations or uh, getting together with family and it, we ha- we both have big families where we spend time cooking together, preparing food. Mm -hmm. And uh, after that, sitting everyone, it's a big noise, a big conversation. And and like uh, for us, I think the most special moment was when we felt even so far away from our place, we felt so connected with people, like Mm -hmm. with uh, not just with the kids, but with their families as well. And it's, it's incredible to talk about Fiji because the I think the most beautiful thing from Fiji is their people. Like it's of course it's a, a tropical island. It's perfect. It's beautiful. Mm. But people from there are amazing. Like they smile. They mm. they just connect to you. So true. I had the same feeling. I love that you say about um, feeling the same way about Brazilian celebrations and the Fijian celebrations. Baby, can you describe a bit about what we did there with um, having lunch together and how that felt? Uh, yes. Um, first, when we first arrived uh, in the village, we uh, got introduced to everyone and then we had the Kava celebration, which is a welcoming, uh, like traditional welcoming for the locals there. And then after that, we went to help the ladies cooking food. And for me, it was really nice because uh, in Fiji, they eat a lot of food that's traditional for us in Brazil as well, oh. as cassava, taro. And uh, it's our work, my work is, um, I am a nutritional therapist. Mm-hmm. And for me, like food is related to everything. Like I think food's a way that, we can connect to people. We can, like, it's a bonding. Uh, it's not just nourishing. It's a source of care, love, and bonding. And when you go there and you help them just through the preparation, they are singing all the time. They, hmm. uh, like, just helping you and teaching you in, in a really nice way. And like while we were waiting for the meal to get ready, we could spend time with kids, with the kids playing soccer or like uh, writing letters, taking photos, and uh, it's 
interesting because we spend almost the whole day, the whole day there, and we couldn't even notice the time going mm. away. Because, like, uh, I think was really uh, a really special and light time for everyone. Like we we really felt at home. We really felt welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Like I remember initially thinking when they described the welcome ceremony before we arrived that they say, you know, they will kind of, um, you know, invite you to be part of their village, you know, that you're part of them. And I thought, oh, that's just words. But it once we were there, it really didn't feel like just words. We felt so, so welcomed there. It was amazing, hey? Exactly. Even that the cover drink doesn't taste as good. <laughs> <laughs> like, but... Uh, was it's really interesting and it's it, the way that they introduce to you and the way that they uh, like make you feel part of their family it's really mm. nice yeah it was very special i've never experienced anything quite like that it's uh, it's kind of unusual to be able to be just land somewhere for the first you know to meet people for the first time and to feel so so welcomed there it was um I guess, I don't know, just probably like you say, the Fijian people are so welcoming that, um, and they, you know, in that village don't have a whole lot of experience meeting tourists. And so they're, you know, super welcoming to us. Exactly. And like, even that was our first time in there, in the village and with that people, like, it's. Uh, was as special as the first time because uh, I was I was expecting to go and then for me like a few of the a few of the the itinerary be a little bit bored because I did that before like mm. it was just two months gap between our first trip there and our second trip mm -hmm. but it it was as interesting as the first time because they like. The way that they they make you be involved in all the preparation, you know, and like in everything, and even uh, like how nice it was for me to see the kids reminding my name and mm. reminding the last time I was the, I was there and everything we done together. Oh, beautiful! Like it was really special. Yeah, that would have been, yeah, it's interesting to, yeah, to see how it is going back in the, a second time. Um, I hope to do the same and uh, I hope it will be just as wonderful the second time. I guess because you know what to expect, uh, you can kind of look deeper perhaps. I know next time I would like, there's more questions I have to ask and people I want to talk to more. Exactly. Mm. And I think as everywhere you go, you have a better connection with some people than others like yeah. and you you build a friendship it's interesting how they they so warming that you build a friendship like in a day with them and just mm. an afternoon absolutely yeah that's how exactly how i felt there's certain people i want to go back and talk to again because i feel very connected to them just from that one day there yeah yeah i have there's one of the, the oldest girls there and She's always looking after the little kids. Her name is Lucy. Uh -huh. And uh, the first time that we were there, she helped uh, because we played soccer with them. We, we, like, we had a really lovely afternoon with them. And she was, in, she was involved and she, she played soccer too. And this time, uh, she's supposed to go to an uh, event at school. But she was so excited to, oh. to meet us again and like to spend time with her that she was waiting there and oh. uh, it was really nice to talk to her and like get to know how how the things were going there and how how good was the impact that we caused uh in the first trip i really did love hearing this perspective from luana who uh, been on the first trip to Fiji and then on the second. So this was actually the very first two tours that Hands On Journeys ran to Fiji. And she and Lucas said that there was already a change, um, I guess, to sound cliched, an empowering change, that the first time the women who ran the cooking class classes were, were more shy and, you know, kind of sat back a bit you know it was harder they were more nervous about working with uh, with tourists I guess and by this time they were certainly so friendly and easy to chat to 
um, and they all came and ate together with us. It was just a beautiful day. I could go on and on, but I won't. I will um, finish up this episode. So I hope that's given you a bit of a taste of what we did in Fiji with the Empowerment Tour- Tourism Project. Uh, it was awesome fun and such a great experience. So different to just going to a resort and staying on the beach for a few days, which is also a beautiful part of Fiji, I must say. It's a gorgeous country, but um, it was really special. So thank you very much for listening to episode 104 of the Thoughtful Travel podcast. You can find more information about Hands On Journeys at handsonjourneys.com um, and also about the empowerment tourism concept in general at empowermenttourism.com. Don't forget you can use Amanda 10 for a 10% discount on any tour and I'll leave a link in the show notes for the September Fiji tour. Uh, it's actually in the school holiday, so if you're in Australia, especially East Coast Australia, it's very close to Fiji, then do look that up. Thank you also to Whitney Taylor, who chatted with me. She works with Gito Connected, the Inspiring Greatness site. I'm going to leave a link to the Gito Connected site there. But you should also check out her gorgeous travel photography on Instagram. I'll leave a link. She's WL, but there's a link in the show notes to get through to that. And also a big thank you to Luana Markey. She's a health and wellness coach. I'm based out of Sydney now, and you can find her at luanamarkey.com.au um, or on Instagram as well at luamarkey. That's L-U-A-M-A-R-C-H-I. Um, look up both of those lovely ladies there. I'm so grateful for them spending some time to chat with me as well. Of course, come along to our wonderful Facebook group and have a chat about whatever you want to think about in the Thoughtful Travel arena. Uh, It's at Thoughtful Travellers. Just search that on Facebook or there's a link in the show notes as well. And of course, these show notes will be at notaballerina.com slash 104. Thank you very, very much for listening. This has been another episode of the Thoughtful Travel Podcast. Show notes and other information are at notaballerina.com slash podcast. Join me again soon for another chat about why we travel. Bye for now.